If you've ever said the words, I know what to do, but I'm just not doing it, then listen up. I have had my fair share of experiences with procrastination and procrastination, well, it's just not fun. And I know it can be so frustrating to make plans for yourself and then not follow through with them because of procrastination. You know, it's one thing if things just happen, but if it's due to procrastination, it can really get you down in the dumps. Now, that being said, I don't want you to be hard on yourself because shame and guilt will often actually keep you in that procrastination cycle longer. However, I know that if you do procrastinate often, I know you are actively trying to figure out how to make this cycle stop and what to do when you just keep procrastinating. So that being said, in this episode, I am bringing you five things you can do when you just can't stop procrastinating. And this stuff is gold. It will change your life because like I said, I have had my fair share of experiences with procrastination, but Y'all, I was like the procrastination queen, okay? I basically deserved an award for being so good at procrastinating, and I would literally blame it on the fact that I worked well under pressure. I mean, sure, I can get stuff done under pressure, and the outcome may be great, but my well-being, on the other hand, not so great. So, I get it. I really, really understand the mental fatigue and frustration you're experiencing if this is happening to you. So I cannot wait for you to hear these tips. But before we get into the show, please make sure you've signed up for the weekly implementation guides. Every single week, I deliver an implementation guide with journal prompts and action items for the Tuesday episodes for you to download and actually implement what you learn from the episode because I'm all about implementation around here because here's the thing. It's easy for you to just sit and listen to someone talk to you, but the way it actually becomes your reality is if you actually implement what you learn. So make sure you get on the email list to receive your weekly implementation guide by going to bit.ly slash power prompts. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash power prompts. And that is going to be linked in the show notes for you. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into today's episode. Hey queen, welcome to Reclaim Terrain. I'm your host, Hannah Brindley, daughter of the king, certified life coach, and faith-fueled business mentor. I know you are so sick of feeling like you've worked so hard in your business with little to no reward while staying in this same cycle of self-sabotaging tendencies you know are keeping you stuck. And because of that, I know you are craving to end this never-ending cycle of self-destruction and cultivate a successful Holy Spirit-led business without letting it become your idol. So if you are ready to be fueled by faith over flesh, fight your battles spiritually instead of physically, take bold action on your God-given callings, and finally create that thriving faith-fueled business, then you're in the right place. Go ahead and reheat your coffee, grab a notebook and pen, and let's dive. Okay, y'all, these tips are fire. So make sure you grab a notebook and pen. I'm serious. They're so good. It really changed my life because like I said, I really struggled with procrastinating. And these are some things that just changed everything. Okay, so if you're ready for it, let's go ahead and get into number one. Okay, so number one is to actually get clear on why you are procrastinating. Now, in episode two of this podcast, I walk you through the five reasons you might be self-sabotaging and how to biblically stop it. Now, procrastination is talked about in this episode because it's often a symptom of self-sabotage. So I highly recommend checking out episode two of the show if you want to get clear on why you might be procrastinating and ultimately how you can approach this from a spiritual perspective perspective. Now, that being said, though, I do want to give you some tangible tips in this episode as well. So that's going to go ahead and lead me to tip number two. And tip number two is to determine your one needle moving activity and your queen routine activities for the day. Now, your one needle moving activity is something that has 
to get done. This is something that will move the needle and is a hardcore priority. Okay, so the one needle moving activity is not a daily habit or intention you do every day, like reading scripture, working out, etc. Those are things you do every day no matter what. Your daily habits like this are things that I would consider the queen routine activities. The one needle moving activity is simply an activity that needs to get done no matter what on top of your queen routine activities. So for me, this will usually be some form of deep work. So this could look like record three podcast episodes or write scripts for three podcast episodes or batch a week's worth of content. That is what that looks like for me. Now, in addition to this one task, I also recommend that you implement your daily sales system. Now, if you need to for a while, let that be your one task, like your one needle moving activity, but I do recommend having those, but I would almost consider your daily sales system something that you do in your quote unquote queen routine because it's a daily habit. The one needle moving activity is more so something that you don't necessarily have to do every every day. Now, a little tip I have for determining your queen routine activities and your one needle moving activity is to determine this the day before if possible. This actually goes into tip number three, which I will talk about in a moment, but please determine this the day before if possible. In addition, stop with the never ending to-do list, okay? Like that just honestly isn't going to get you anywhere because it's going to make you feel super overwhelmed. It's going to put you in analysis paralysis and you're just not going to get anything done. I mean, let's be honest. When was the last time you actually finished every single thing on your to-do list? I mean, for me, that was like never. So there's that, which is why I implemented this because I actually got a lot more done and I was able to think about the things that actually mattered and do those instead of these random little things I had on my list that I was just doing because I wanted to avoid the hard thing and the hard thing was actually the thing that was actually going to get me the most results. So there's some food for thought for you. So let's go ahead and talk about tip number three. Now, tip number three is to reduce the amount of decisions you need to make in a day. Now, why does this affect procrastination? This is because when you have to make so many decisions in a day, this creates decision fatigue. And listen, making decisions and also not making decisions is exhausting. Like it's truly exhausting and will often lead to procrastination simply because you're spending so much mental space and time thinking about your next steps or thinking about how to get out of taking your next steps. I mean, who's been there? Hi, like I'm raising my hand over here because this has been huge for me to just get rid of making as many decisions as I possibly can. So here's some ways that you can actually reduce the amount of decisions you need to make in a day. So first things first is to pick your one needle moving activity the day before in addition to your queen routine activities. So those are the habits that you would need to do every day like scripture reading, working out, etc. Another thing that you can do is to go ahead and decide what you're eating, right? Like maybe you need to write it down. Maybe you need to go ahead and have a plan of where are you going to get the food? Or if you need to meal prep, go ahead and make that decision. Maybe you need to decide in advance which days of the week you're going to exercise instead of determining it the day of. Maybe you wear similar outfits every single day. You know, like that's okay. I'm pretty sure Steve Jobs wore the same outfit every day because he wanted to reduce the amount of decisions that he needed to make on a daily basis. I do something similar. I wear the same clothes (laughs) consistently every single week because I know my brain is going to be free and clear of making a decision about what I'm going to wear. I just feel a lot more peace and relief and that's the one less thing I have to think about. And then I just have to put in a plug here. If you just haven't made a decision about something, but it's just like keeping you up at night, just make a decision. Just make a decision, any decision, just make one because I can promise you that if it's the quote unquote wrong decision, God will reroute you. God will reroute you and you have to trust that. 
to just make a decision, take away that, you know, stress you are putting on your mind and let it go, make the decision and move on. So now let's talk about tip number four, which is the nothing alternative. Now, the nothing alternative is a tip for avoiding procrastination that was actually you know, created and coined by a novelist, Raymond Chandler. Now he used it as a way to avoid procrastination with his writing. And Chandler basically had a hard time sitting down and actually writing every day. So to combat this and to avoid procrastination and to actually kickstart him doing the work, he would actually set aside four hours every single morning and give himself an ultimatum, which was write or do nothing at all. So essentially it was pretty simple. Now he didn't have to write, but he couldn't do anything else. (laughs) So if you are really having a hard time actually getting to work, this may be a really great method to try. And I personally would recommend trying this with your one needle moving activity for the day. So maybe set aside 60 or 90 minutes to do it, but you have to do it without email, Instagram, Facebook, text, TV, distractions, none of that. Shut it down, shut all the distractions down and just get it done. You know, this is your time to focus because truly, like if you just sit there and you're like, okay, I don't actually have to do this thing, but I'm not gonna do anything else. You will probably get started. (laughs) So try that. Now let's move on to tip number five, which is last but definitely not least because this is actually one of my favorites. And that is to use Newton's first law of motion to your advantage. Now, what am I even talking about? (laughs) Let me take you to physics class. So Newton's first law of motion or law of inertia is an object at rest remains at rest and an object in motion remains in motion at constant speed and in a straight line unless acted on by an unbalanced force. Now, this law doesn't just apply when you throw a ball or something like that. It also applies to your work life and your habits and your lifestyle. But how and how do you use this? Personally, I use this specific tactic a lot when I'm having a really hard time getting started on something. And I use this tactic by turning off all distractions, setting a timer for 15 minutes and make myself do the work. And I only have to do the work for 15 minutes, but for those 15 minutes, it's go time. You know, and if I don't actively work the full 15 minutes, I know I'm gonna have to do it again. So I actually do the work and it's only for 15 minutes. And this works wonderfully for me because what usually happens is that when I get started, I can get in the zone and the hard part of starting is over because I've started and it actually wasn't as hard as I thought it was. So when those 15 minutes are up, I don't usually stop, but I do give myself full permission to check in and ask myself if I want to continue working. And nine times out of 10, I do. So basically I'm combining the nothing alternative that I mentioned in tip number four, but with the time limit. (laughs) So what does this have to do with physics though? You know, again, Newton's first law of motion says an object at rest remains at rest and an object in motion remains in motion at constant speed. So getting yourself to move when you're at rest is going to be the hardest part. But once you're in motion, you're going to remain in motion. You're going to keep going. It's not going to be as difficult to move once you actually get started. It's hard to get out of rest because an object at rest remains at rest unless you make yourself move. So do what you have to do just to get started because that's the hardest part. And this little tip works for me just about every single time. 
And you can use this tip in more ways than just sitting down and doing your deep work. You know, if you don't want to go to the gym, just put on your gym clothes. Then just drive yourself there. Then just get yourself to walk in and walk on the treadmill for five minutes. The most powerful and long lasting and life changing transformations come to fruition by just getting started. But if you don't start, that'll never happen. You don't have to change every aspect of your life right away. You don't have to go from zero to 100. Stop thinking that you're going to wake up an entirely different person tomorrow and change everything about your life that you want to change. Because again, true lifelong and lasting change happens with Jesus, of course, but it happens with small, consistent changes that you make every single day. And that is it. That wraps up today's episodes. Those were the five things to do when you just keep procrastinating. And I really, really hope that these tips just bless you. And I cannot wait to hear which tips you're going to implement next. So definitely send me a DM over on Instagram at Hannah Brindley and let me know which tip was your favorite. I would love to hear. Hey queen, don't head out just yet. If this podcast has blessed you in some way, it would mean the absolute world to me if you left a written review of the show over on Apple Podcasts. It truly lights a fire in me knowing how God has impacted you through this platform. And since I absolutely adore connecting with you, please, please, please screenshot this episode or your review and post it on your stories on Instagram and tag me at Hannah Brindley. I can't wait to see you over there. So much love to you.